be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up. Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the greatest of all Americans was Benjamin Franklin. In 1887, he made a speech before the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia. He arose to suggest that the daily proceedings be opened with prayer. He said, I have lived a long time, sirs, 81 years. And the longer I live, the more convincing proof I see of this truth, that God governs the affairs of men. And if a sparrow cannot fall to the ground without his noise, is it probable that an empire can rise without his aid? We have been assured by the sacred writers that except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. I therefore beg to live move that henceforth prayers imploring the assistance of heaven be held in this assembly every morning before we proceed to business. My brothers and sisters, we know that prayer is one thing that belongs to God. We are his creatures, his precious children. We have the obligation to honor him by prayer. The question is frequently asked, why should I pray? One answer is that we should pray to make known our needs to God. The importance of making known our one's needs to God is clearly shown by the gospel story of Jesus entering the city of Jericho. When Jesus was entering that city shortly before his death, a blind beggar, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside, and he began to cry out, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. He continued to cry out despite the attempts of the crowd to silence him. Finally, our Lord Jesus heard him and cured him. If Bartimaeus had remained silent, Jesus would have passed him by and he would never have regained his sight. But because Bartimaeus made known his need to God, Jesus was able to cure him. Our state is like that of Bartimaeus. If we do not pray and make known our needs to God, it is foolish to expect God's divine assistance or help. Another answer, answer on why we should pray is because of the power of prayer. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered together in, in my name, there am I in the midst of them. For this reason, prayer, when recited in a group, 
has the power to call down God from heaven into the presence of men. The power of prayer is so great that it has been called the key of heaven. When Jesus was suffering death on Mount Calvary, he was being crucified between two criminals. One of them, Dimas, was able to ask for his help, saying, Jesus, remember me when you entered upon your reign. Jesus' reply was, This day you will be with me in paradise. For this reason, a single prayer had the power of gaining eternal happiness for a dying criminal. Scenes like these are reenacted daily. Prayer has opened the gates of heaven and saved more souls from damnation and hell than any man can number. An act of perfect contrition has the power to remove mortal sin from one's soul. Prayer has the power to gain sanctifying grace. It can bring God from heaven into the soul of man. Prayer has the power to release souls from purgatory. A soul in purgatory is powerless to help himself. He must depend upon the prayers of the church militant here on earth. When one realizes that his prayers can free us all from such a great sufferings, he can grasp some idea of the power of prayer. Prayer can stay or move the hand of God to act. Prayer can change the course of history. It makes a lasting mark in eternity. Therefore, we must pray for two reasons, to make known our needs to God and because of the power of prayer. Another question that is frequently asked concerning prayer is, how should I pray? The answer to that, one, uh, to that question should be that one should pray with devotion, humility, and resignation to the will of God and without ceasing. Since prayer is the elevation of the soul to God, one should pray with devotion. He should mean what he says in prayer. For too often people regard prayer as a lip service which they render to God. They become like the parrot that can recite perfectly the 56 words of the Lord's Prayer of our Father. When we pray, we should mean what we say in prayer. One's prayer should be humble, for it is written in the book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, the prayer of him who humbled himself shall pierce the clouds. Jesus taught us, to, taught us this lesson when he was preaching the parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. The Pharisee was praying aloud and proudly, while the tax collector, the Republican, was asking God to be merciful to him because he was a sinner. Jesus said that these men went back to his house justified rather than the other. For he who exalts himself shall be humble, and he who humbles himself shall be exalted. One should pray with resignation to the will of God, for too often, people pray that only their own will be done. They forget that God is all-knowing, that he knows our needs better than we do ourselves. Jesus gave us the example of how to pray in this regard. While he was praying in the Garden of Olives, Jesus said, Father, not my will, but yours may be done. Finally, in the words of St. Paul, one ought to pray without ceasing. This means that when the one should pray regularly each day. That is, one had to pray upon rising in the morning, in the evening before retiring, <coughs> and before and after each meal. 
Each day, one should make an act of perfect contrition for his own sins. But to pray always means more than this. It means that we should make our every action a prayer to God. We can concentrate our daily actions by reciting the morning offering each day. Through this simple prayer, every, everything that we, will, that we will do become a prayer to God. In this way, we can pray without ceasing. Truly, if one prays in this manner with humility, resignation, devotion, and without ceasing, he will be exalted in heaven. Jesus had said, Ask and you should receive that your joy may be complete. <laughs>